Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, we're going to talk about why this space is so brightly colored. When you think of a Navy ship, certain colors come to mind. Uh, or really it's just several shades of the same color, gray. Uh, and yet, here we are in this room with all sorts of bright and vibrant colors. Uh, we are down below the waterline in fire room number two, one of the engineering spaces on Battleship New Jersey. And everything is colored down here. Did a rainbow explode in this space? Did the, the crew just go ham with, with the paintbrushes? Or is this how it is supposed to look? Well, if you were on this ship in World War II, this space would be very disconcerting to you. It would not have been a colorful space at that time. Although, it's just about all the same original equipment. But, if you sailed on any ship uh, during the later part of this ship's career and even into the modern day, you would probably have a solid idea of what's going on down here. If you worked in an engine room on just about any ship and you came down into New Jersey's engine room, you might not know how this propulsive system works entirely, but you could at least figure things out based on the color coding. So, uh, essentially, all of the various valve wheels and other things down here, uh, and even some of the pipes themselves, are painted in specific colors that are standard around the world so that you know what they're doing. Battleship New Jersey, it was quite common for crew members to be assigned for about two years. Some people were on board a little bit shorter than that, some people a little bit longer, uh, but it means that the crew is constantly rotating out. And especially by the 1980s, this sort of 600-pound uh, steam plant isn't the most common thing anymore. Uh, we're switching to diesels, we're switching to gas turbines, there, there's all sorts of other propulsive me methods out there. So, having a color-coded system makes it easier for the new crew to be trained. Out as the messenger, which uh, is a nice word for gopher, mm -hmm. and you're doing all the readings and all the uh, tests, the oil, oil lab tests and all that other stuff, fetching coffee, and a lot of it was uh, you had to draw diagrams for all the different lines down in the boiler room. You had to, to trace lines and, and draw out all what every, where every line went so that you knew all the stuff that was going on down there. And you, you did that while you were a messenger. And once you got that stuff done, then you could move up to uh, the, boil, the boiler front. And then from the boiler front, you can move up to the superheated boiler front. And then from there, you can move up to the checks. And uh, that's kind of the way it went. Now, some of the colors are, are pretty intuitive. Blue is fresh water. Green is seawater, specifically when it's being used in a cooling function. Red, on the other hand, is salt water being used for fire and flushing the fire mains and flushing the toilets, which is typically all one system. On Battleship New Jersey, it's all the same thing. Uh, oil is yellow. Lubricating oil, on the other hand, is yellow and black stripes, as opposed to fuel oil. Uh, and likewise, firefighting water remembers red. Firefighting foam is red and green stripes. So, there are all sorts of different color combinations. I'm just giving you a couple that are down here. Uh, steam is white, for example. So, a sailor coming down into this space can look around and pretty much trace out. Well, there's the fuel line going into this particular machine. There's where the nearest firefighting equipment is. There's seawater. Gives you an idea of what you're looking at, and it really helps you familiarize yourself quickly, which is important when Chief starts yelling at you to do something. Hey, go turn that fresh water valve. Uh, which one? Oh, the blue one, of course. There, right there. As built, and for the early part of the ship's career, it would not have been as simple as the unicorn vomit behind me makes it seem. During World War II, and uh, the pre-war years leading up to it, there was a very different system uh, where the different types of plumbing would have a different number of colored bands around them. This is kind of hard to tell, especially from the black and white photography of the day. However, believe it or not, it's really, really well depicted 
in the movie Sand Pebbles. Uh, the, the Steve McQueen movie where he's working in an engine room on a pre-war gunboat on the China Station shows the color scheme um, of an engine room of the period when New Jersey was built and originally operated. And it shows the, the different stripes around the plumbing. And um, it's not uh, particularly intuitive. You might have four green bands or three blue bands or, or whatever, and they all mean different things. And, and they usually only show up once or twice on a pipe in a space. So you got some of these like, really long pipes going all over the place. You don't know what direction they're going or uh, there's nothing right here on this pipe. What, what is it? How do I know what it is? Uh, so it was much more difficult, required you to be far more specialized with the vessel you were on. Remember the whole training montage of him uh, teaching, I can't remember the, the uh, other character's name or title, um, but how the engine room worked on the old uh, San Pueblo, I think was the name of the ship. Anyway, this really gets simplified with the color coding later on in the ship's career. And it's not just color coding. You also see things such as arrows painted pretty frequently, showing you the direction of the flow. Or um, oftentimes you'll see stenciling added to things. It's relatively difficult at this time to cut a stencil. It's not the simplest thing in the world. There's a link in the description below to our uh, stencil cutting machine we've got in the museum's collections. So check that out. It, it's not as simple as typing into a computer what you want to show up there. And you have to cut a different stencil for just about everything. So complex, and yet in the 80s they decided to do it. And it makes the ship significantly simpler to understand, especially for non-Navy operators such as the museum. So as we're coming in and trying to trace out plumbing problems, which are the large part of the problems, especially the dangerous problems on this ship that could result in her being damaged, um, it's very critical for us to be able to say, oh, this is the auxiliary steam line or the chill water line or, 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 and the air is pointing this way. So we, it makes it easier to trace out that plumbing because the ship did have blueprints that showed what everything did. We may or may not have them. We may or may not be able to lay hands on them if we do, but nine times out of 10, even when we find the blueprints, they change things over the ship's career, things that don't show up in those plans. So at the end of the day, it always comes down to, you gotta come down and trace it out yourself visually and follow these things around to see where they're coming from which is so much easier with the stenciling and the color coding than if it was just the, the old colored band system. It's still critical to know where everything is in your space so that when Chief tells you something bad's gonna happen, you gotta go and close this valve or open this valve. So uh, pretty frequently as a new engine, as a fireman striker in the engineering department, you will uh, be told to trace out the entire system and be able to show where every valve is on, on uh, basically a plumbing diagram. So that, that is very common training. And some guys takes about a year to learn the, the critical things in their spaces. Um, and these sorts of diagrams are depicted on the, uh, what would you call them? The, the, on the status boards in the engine rooms. So here you can see an idea of how complicated just the major systems are where each snap switch depicts a different valve and if it's in line with the pipe that means it's open if it's out of line with the pipe that means it's closed what is a movie that was made out there that helps your understanding of history maybe even in a weird way that you wouldn't expect let us know in the comment section down below uh, sand pebbles really helped me understand how steam engineering plants worked and what they look like back during the uh, pre-war and World War II days. My battleship doesn't look like she would have been World War II, so I have to find other depictions of ships that are still in that time period. But let us know your answers in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating 
to support the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.